This is Tim. On the outside, he's a normal, playful three-year-old. But Tim is not your average three-year-old. Tim was born with a genetic disease called Severe Compromised Immunodeficiency Syndrome, or SCID. Even 10 years ago, a person with Tim's condition would have been confined to a bubble. Because their immune systems aren't working correctly, kids with SCID may get serious infections in early life, including pneumonia, meningitis, and sepsis. In order to learn more about how SCID works, let's look at the immune system. When an invader first enters the body, the B cell goes on high alert to attach to a matching invader or antigen. B cells are specifically programmed to match only with certain antigens then the B cell gets activated by a T cell. After interacting with the T cell, the B cell can now make two kinds of cells, plasma and memory. The plasma cells produce the antibodies that will attack the invaders. Once the invaders are attacked by antibodies, they are identified and destroyed. If the same type of invader enters the body again, the memory cells produced by the B cell will recognize it and quickly start the cycle again. In SCID, the immune system functions abnormally. These are all of the types of SCID known to science right now. Let's look at the two most common types. In ADA SCID, the deletion of the ADA or adenosine deaminase gene on chromosome 20 means the production of T and B cells is severely lacking in the affected individual. In X-linked SCID, a mutation in the SCID X1 gene located on the X chromosome also means there aren't enough T and B cells. What cells there are can't communicate because antigen receptors don't form. Because children with SCID don't have enough cells to fight off infection, they are often sick as infants. Some infections may be opportunistic, but usually include some type of pneumonia, meningitis, or fungal infection. In order for children with SCID to survive, they were once kept inside plastic bubbles protected from the environment and its threat. With advances in treatment, kids with SCID now have a chance for a normal life. The key is providing reduced intensity conditioning leading up to the transplant. Conditioning therapy is the treatment that is given to the patient before they are considered ready to accept those normal donor cells. Hi you. If the conditioning is very low grade, then donor cells may not engraft and we may land up with what is called graft rejection. There's not another option for long term. We knew what we had to do. They did um, four days of CAMPAF two weeks before his transplant. CAMPAF is a, is a chemo. You are so good. And his transplant was a success. He's never had any fevers or infections or anything since then. And, and it, it was amazing. Just... Uh, remembering him from before his transplant to seeing him now um, is just a good feeling. When my brother did this, transplant wasn't an option. And uh, I think it's absolutely amazing that Sean had that option. Let it go. And, you know, we don't have to worry about his future. <laughs>